Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. What I want to talk about today is one of the ramifications of yet another ramification of not acknowledging reality, because it seems like there's, there's really, there's two sides. There's good and there's evil. So this is, this is a very old story as old as, as, as human history, there's good and there's evil. And it makes it very, very black and white. And with acknowledging that there's good and there's evil, you never compromise with evil. What is, what is righteous and what is good should never and can never compromise with what is evil. Now, there are certain things that you can compromise with. You can compromise over a process. You can compromise over things of that nature. But the foundation, we must, we must be, we must build our civilization on the foundation of what is morally good and righteous. And that can't be compromised. Otherwise, you allow cracks in your foundation. And those cracks over decades, as we're finding out now, slowly but surely unsteady that foundation. And basically, we, we, we broach a situation where it can all come down. And it's all because you started to compromise with evil. It's just a little bit. Right, it makes sense when you do it. Like ah, just a little bit. And evil will use whatever it can. It will use good people with kind hearts. It will use ignorant people. It will use greedy people who who themselves have one foot in that evil tub, you know. And then, of course, it will use just out and out and out, just evil, irredeemable monsters. And so that, there's a spectrum, right? And so yes, you can recognize that and go, okay, well, this person is just being used by evil. But even that person being used by evil is still is still complicit in, in evil acts, right? Like if you have that person who is who is driving the car of 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 like let's say there's four people and one of them is driving a car and the other three are inside committing a crime inside of a bank or inside of a home or whatever committing a crime, even though that person didn't get out of the car, even though that person may not have been armed and the other three were, even though the person may not have actively committed any acts of violence or evil, our laws, both natural and man, still recognize that that person is complicit. They're complicit. Even if they didn't know, they still have some culpability. It's just the way that works, right? So I say all that to set this up. What I want to talk about today is illegal immigration. Now, I've actually had somebody say this to me. It's the stupidest thing ever. They, they tell me there's no such thing as an illegal person. That is such a stupid statement and it reveals that person's stupidity and ignorance and willingness to be controlled by evil puppet masters, right? Because that statement is a, as, as ignorant and as inapplicable as somebody saying that killing an, an, an unborn innocent child is a reproductive right, right? Like you've actually been programmed by evil to believe in something that you, you think is righteous yet produces evil, like it, like produces evil. So you tell me that there's no such thing as an illegal person. And the fact that you even say that shows your ignorance because of course there's no such thing as an illegal person. Nobody's born an illegal anything, right? You're not an illegal person. You have a human being who has free will commit an evil act of their own choice and then they're held responsible for it. Anybody that crosses our borders knows that they're not doing it legally. Therefore, they make themselves criminals. They are now engaging in illegal immigration or illegal migration and thus are now illegal immigrants or illegal aliens. And if they bring their children, unfortunately, their children have to suffer the actions of, of their parents. That's the way that works. If, if I were to commit a crime, if me and my wife were to commit a crime, right? No, just say I were to commit a crime and I have my children with me and I get arrested, they're going to take my children away from me and hold them in a different place. Yet everyone's like, well, why are they separating the children? Why? Because that's what we do. We don't put children with adults. And, 
And furthermore, when you talk about, well, there's kids in cages, that's just another evil manipulation trying to pull in your heartstrings because, oh yeah, for the kids, because they know that people have a soft spot for children, as you should. But we don't go to Mexico, take their children and bring them here and then put them in detention centers. They're brought here by their parents who are engaging in illegal acts. So I'm gonna show you yet another ramification of people choosing to engage in illegal behavior. And for some reason, every other country on this planet is allowed to protect their borders, protect the sovereignty of their citizenship, but we're, we're apparently not. Okay, well, here's, 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 here's a, con a consequence in the real world, because you guys are living in fantasy land. Here's a consequence in the real world of what happens when you don't, when you don't respect your country enough, when you don't respect citizen, citizenship enough, when you don't love your country enough to protect it and require people to love it and respect it at the same level, and thus going through the proper channels. If you want to help these people, go to Mexico and teach them how to do it properly and come inside. No, that's not what you're talking about. You just think open borders and open it. Like there's not going to be any ramifications whatsoever. There's a thing called causality. That's why I say that you guys are living in a fantasy world. You're being pre-programmed. You guys are NPCs being pre-programmed by evil individuals to suit their own ends. And you believe that you're actually on a righteous path. Yet everything that you produce with your good intentions brings nothing but tragedy and death. Nothing but. And somehow you still believe, in spite of all of the data, you still believe that you are somehow you somehow hold the moral high ground. It's fascinating to me, okay? But check this out. Maybe this will shed some light on some things. So, this is coming from The Blaze. This is Joseph uh, McKinnon. This is September 14th of 2022. So big shout out to The Blaze. Americans bear $20 billion burden yearly for the millions of illegal aliens who've stolen across southern borders since Biden took office. This is just since Biden took office, 20 billion a year. 20 billion a year. This is us paying for it. This is us paying for your stupidity. Your, there's no such thing as an illegal person. This is us paying for that. If you're not wanting to protect our borders, you're gonna pay for it and we all are gonna to have to. How is that right? How is that righteous? How is that righteous? Me, me and my wife, we, we make good decisions. We've educated ourselves. We, we, are, we now have professions. I'm self-employed. She's, she's in a medical industry. We have professions that we can leverage for an excellent wage that allows us to purchase a home, to go on vacation, to take care of our children and provide for them the best. And now I have to provide for people who engage in illegal activity? Is that what you're saying? Like I should want to? I should want to be stolen from? So they, they devalue our citizenship and then they take money out of my pocket. They take money out of, out of our savings. They take food out of our children's mouths because they don't want to engage in legal activity and I'm supposed to somehow feel for them. I'm supposed to somehow go, oh, that's just so bad. Like, no, they shouldn't be in detention. So, like, stop it. If you want to give them your money, then you go ahead. I want a wall there. I want our borders protected. I want, I want them, as soon as they cross the border, put them on a bus and take them back and drop them off to, to where they're nationals of and, and extra, instruct them, give them a pamphlet. Hey, here's how you come here legally. And if you don't want to do that, don't come here. That's the way it works if you actually cared about this country. But, but you don't. You don't care about citizenship. You, you live in this fantasy world where you think some kind of utopia is going to be made if you steal and force. If you engage, if you engage in theft and you engage in forcing and imposing your will on others, there's never going to be utopia. Okay, that's tyranny. Let's read some of this. Nearly 5 million illegal aliens have crossed the border since... President Biden took office. So far this year, of those encountered at the southern border, over 500,000 illegal aliens have been released into the interior of the country by Border Patrol. In addition to suppressing the wages of low-skilled American citizens, which usually affects minorities, you know, the minorities and, and the marginalized that you say you care about, they're the, they're the first affected by this because they, they're usually at low-skilled jobs, okay? There's, there's nothing wrong with low skill jobs, there's, there's, you can have pride in it, you're, you're earning an honest wage. So there's nothing wrong with having a low skill job at all. But these illegal aliens are coming over, illegal immigrants are coming over, as you like to call them, illegal people, which is ridiculous, nobody ever says that. They're coming over and they're taking these jobs. So then what are actual citizens gonna do then? How are they gonna provide for their families? And you're supposed to be the one with the good intentions, you're the, you're the good one. No, you're harming our country. You're harming, you're harming families. You're taking food off of people's tables with, with, your, with their ideal, idealistic 
stupidity is all it could be, you know, boiled, boiled down to. So if you did a little research, you'd understand how much we need to protect our borders, how every country throughout the history of man has needed to protect their borders. Oh my goodness. <laughs> committing crimes beyond their initial breaking of the American immigration laws. So these people are also committing crimes beyond, not all of them, but they are, and potentially undermining the integrity of elections because we know that Democrats will use and do anything to stay in office. So giving, and this, is, this isn't something that's hyperbole. Democrats are pushing to have non-citizens have the right to vote. That makes absolutely no sense. That means our elections don't mean anything. Our citizenship doesn't mean anything. Anybody can just come here and just vote. And then they try to sell it to you like it makes sense. And then you actually believe it. Well, yeah, you know, if, if they're here and they're working, then like, no, they're not citizens. If they went through it proper channels to become citizens, that's, that's like winning a prize. That's being rewarded for showing how much you respect the country that you went through the proper channels. And part of that reward is now you get to actually have a say in how this country is led. You don't just steal something and then, then have a say. <laughs> you don't give the criminal a say. Somebody breaks into your house and you go, oh, okay, well, now that you're here, you know, what would you like for dinner? What do you think we should, we should buy for groceries? But you're, but you're the good guy though, right? You're the good guy. And me, you probably try to label me as some right-wing extremist or something like that, not knowing anything about me whatsoever. Not knowing anything about me, right? You're the good guy. You wanna give the criminals, you wanna give the criminals the power, same power that the law-abiding have. Don't you think that's gonna incentivize more criminal behavior? Or do you just not want laws at all? Just a free-for-all? Okay. That's, that's what you're going to get because <laughs> because if you if you don't if you don't decentivize criminal behavior, all you're going to get is more of it. It's going to escalate. That's why our crime is going up because nobody is, is holding these people to account for their actions. So like, hey, I'll just keep doing it then. Shoot. Why not? Right. Like you, you mean to tell me I can steal eight hundred dollars worth of stuff. And, and if you do catch me, I'm, I'm going to be like put right back on the street. Sweet. I don't even have to work. I could just keep stealing $800 worth of stuff. <laughs> Never mind how it's going to affect the local economy and businesses are going to close and jobs are going to go away and people are going to move away. And the cost of living is, is, is in my whole neighborhood is just going to, going to plummet because the value of the homes and everything is, is gone. But they're not illegal people, though. <laughs> A new study published by the Federation of American Immigration Reform determined that to provide for the, for the needs of those criminal non-citizens who have entered the U.S. under Biden, taxpayers must carry the burden of an additional $20.4 billion a year. FAIR, which is just an acronym for Federation for American Immigration, noted that this annual figure is not included in the estimated $140 billion per year that taxpayers are already weighted with, which compensates for the provision of services and benefits to the longer term illegal alien population. You know, I would ask, like, what, what are you doing? Why, why are you advocating for this? Why, are you, why won't you join us in the real world where objective truth is the only thing that matters? Why don't you join us over here where, where we know that in order to actually even have a country, you must have borders that are protected. Otherwise, there's no reason to have a country whatsoever. Where, where, where cause and effect actually matter. You let all these people in, what, what's going to happen? Who's going to take care of them? Where are they going to, where are they, how are they going to take care of themselves? If we're just letting them in, who's vetting them? How do we know if they have criminal backgrounds? How do we know if they're, if they're gang members or rapists or, or even if they're plumbers or electricians? How do we know? How do we know? Maybe they do have a trait where they can contribute. That's why we have a process. But no, you want to put, you want to put our country in danger, our citizenship. You want to devalue that. You want to put our populace in danger of potential criminals. You want to take money and potential and uh, jobs and opportunities away from actual citizens, all under the guise of, of you having a big heart and being compassionate. No, you're not. You're not compassionate. You don't have a big heart. What you are is you're complicit in evil. That's what you are. And you're being used and, you're, and you're, your heart is being used and your mind's being controlled because if you just would adhere to objective truth, this is not, this is not partisan. This is, has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with reality. It has to do with people's lives. You understand that, right? It has to do with people's lives. If you actually would just research dispassionately, look at the numbers, look at it, it's all there. Look at the ramifications of just letting people cross a border. 
right? And this, this doesn't even cover, I'll, I'll include the, the link to this uh, article so you can read through it more. I'm not going to read any more, actually, because I think the point's been driven home. But there's even more, and I don't know if this article could cover it later, but there's even more than that. Because when you look at how gangs, because there's an opportunity, because we're not protecting our borders, gangs see an opportunity and cartels see an opportunity to use our, our ineptitude at protecting our own borders is really what it comes down to. Our unwillingness to protect our own borders as an opportunity to make money. So there's, there's drug trafficking, there's human trafficking, there's, there's the you know, mules and, and people. That, they, they send people across in containers and, and suitcases and all kinds of stuff. And they don't care about these people. They get their money taking advantage of these people who are trying to come here for, for what they see as a better life, right? Because this country isn't a racist country. This is a land of opportunity, despite, you know, what a lot of people say. Why would these people even want to come here? Because this land is actually great and you guys are all bonkers. So there's opportunity for these people to get used and abused. And you're complicit in that as you don't want to protect the border. Like I said, tragedy just ensues because you think yourself a righteous person and your good intentions are killing people. They're taking away opportunities. They're, they're undermining our citizenship, the value of our citizenship. They're undermining our country. You're not a good person. And you need, to, you need to own that and wake up to that and then change. I have faith that you can change once you acknowledge this. Because as I said, in addition, in addition to, to dubious and evil people taking advantage of the situation, taking advantage of people, there's also the folks who, who, who die trying to make it, those states that are on the, that are on the border, they then have to deal with, with these dead bodies. And that costs the, the local government, costs them money. The local taxpayers have to pay to have these people have autopsies and bury them and all that. So there's multiple levels here where law-abiding citizens are being penalized for doing what's right and living righteous and living by the law and, and respecting their, their country and, and wanting to do right. They're being penalized because you somehow think that it's, that it's benevolent to just not have a border. And you say there's no such thing as an illegal person. Yet you don't even live at this border. You're not the one who's getting even directly affected. Not initially. It does affect us. That's why I want to show you this article. It is affecting you. It's affecting all of us. But you don't really see it yet, but you will. And you go like, well, why is this happening? It's happening because of you. Because you supported illegal activity. You supporting illegal activity makes you complicit. And that's really, the, that's really the point of all this. So please stop saying that there's no such thing as an illegal person. I had somebody say that, and I almost laughed because there's no such thing as a legal person. I, like, are you, are you a six-year-old? What are you talking about? Why are you saying words that don't make sense? And you actually think that you, you interjected some kind of viable rebuttal. <laughs> there's no excuse for illegal activity. None. A person can choose to engage in illegal activity and they can choose to abide by the law. There's no excuse for the latter, which is why we have consequences. And those consequences should deter that behavior. And right now it's not. And so we're getting more crime, we're getting more violent crime, and we're getting more illegal immigration. And this is happening under Chinatown Joe because he invited this. He invited it. And don't tell me I'm wrong because I watched him invite everyone, him and Kamala invited everybody over. And then when it got to be too much and started to make them look bad, then they said, er, stop, stop coming here. There were even segments where they were asking people who were actually crossing the border and just walking on, walking on through, they asked them. And they said they were here because of Biden. Which brings me to another thing. This man does not care about our country. He is a political mercenary. Somebody has their hand up his backside and they're making his mouth move. And the people, that, that person, that hand, hates this country because it stands in the way of, of their power grab. I've said it before. What they want is a two-class system. Them up there and everybody else down here. Remember, we'll own nothing in 35 years and we'll be happy about it. That sounds like slavery to me. But you'll be happy to be a slave, so it'll be, so it'll be okay. Yeah, that's what socialism is and communism. Okay. Anyway, they want you in the dark. I'm over here <laughs> trying to help you to turn on that light. Okay? All right. You guys be well.